geeky at the time. My teach I had him I think three years out of high school. Mm -hmm. Um and through that avenue of teaching and learning I was able to to grasp this concept of social justice. It wasn't until him like constantly unknowing the heck out of me to go to Mecha. Um just have to go to Mecha, go to Mecha. And to like be straight honest, I only went once for the extra credit. <laughs> Uh, before you know it, I was taking on leadership roles for the Mecha, and my senior year, um, I was presented with an application to Union, and it only seemed natural. Like, okay, you learn this, and so you see how fucked up the world is, so what you gonna do about it? Um, and so it was a natural process for me. Um, I started my senior year as an Union member, serving as chair of Mecha, and I've been here ever since. So. Um, I got involved uh, through, I would say, popular social movements, um, particularly in the height of um, anti-immigrant hysteria around HR 4437. Um, and it was actually Compa Kelly who invited me to a Zapata march. And I went out with my family at the time, you know, young children, strollers. Um, and I was really exposed to a different level of organizing and um, I would say that was a moment of conscientización, of something more than just a progressive, you know, holding a banner or voting. Um, it was more of a popular social movement. It's important for us to be part of struggle because even though we have, you know, all these other responsibilities, you know, um, you know, being madres and um, sisters and um, you know whatnot, like being in charge of the family. We also have to play a very strong role in, you know, um, how our society gets transformed because, like, we're the primary educators too, um, not only of like our sons and daughters, but you know, many of us are teachers in our profession. We need to be out there teaching in the community. You know, how we need to advocate for ourselves for change and not accept the crumbs that they give us. Uh, and we know that mujeres have played an important role in like any movement, you know, you have the Adelitas with Mexican Revolution. Um, and I think that that legacy has to continue by having mujeres take on the ship roles, you know, and to have Che be run by mujeres, I think that's something that um, needs to be highlighted. I also and I think that a lot of the different forms of oppression affect us um, in multiple ways. So we have multiple, multiple forms of oppression, and so it, it seems rightly that um, we struggle back and it has to be in a collectivized form. It has to be alongside our, um, you know, mujeres and it has to be alongside our male um, counterparts. That it's, it's important that mujeres are vocal about um, any concerns where they feel that, you know, they're not being respected or they're not being represented well. Like, I think that they need to be outspoken and really um, voice those issues. And I think historically, if you you know, we're to study the archives of Unión del Barrio. Las mujeres siempre hemos sido um, líderes. You know, we haven't been, you know, the in the background. We're always at the forefront in positions of power, um, you know, in, in leadership positions. And I think that I, I am a firm believer that without mujeres no hay revolución. And so, as mothers, as daughters, as sisters, uh, we need to continue that legacy of resistance and use like our avenues and facilitate and sponsor like consciousness in our homes, um, consciousness outside in the community and like within our own families and I think that we have that that duty as mujeres and as men and as anyone in between. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of work that needs to be done with the LGBT community and I think that, that that's something that that's a sector of our community that continues to have lack of representation within Union. And I, and I know that within our base, we're in the works of working with facilitating that discussion. And without having a position, like you're kind of siding with someone who you're not supposed to side with. And so we need to have that representation of that community within Union. Uh, in, in indigenous philosophy, um, we struggle for the previous seven generations and the next seven generations. There isn't anything that I can do, um, particularly today, that can universally transform the world. But collectively, we can uh, make dents in the system. You know, I don't want to imagine a world that only capitalism is possible. Wholeheartedly believe that another world is possible, and um, and she's on her way. Um, I learned a lot about social issues that 
pertained to me, specifically um, coming from undocumented parents and living so close to the border. Um, that issue was always so pertinent in my family and something that we never really could um, live without being reminded of. Um, and so I always knew that um, I wanted to be an immigration lawyer and I wanted to do something to help my community and help people that faced um, the same issues that my parents have and continue to this day um, to face. And, and that really uh, pushed me to be involved in my community and, and not just sit back and, and not do anything about it, knowing that so many people are being deported and detained and, uh, for very unjust reasons. You know, even if it's just like a drop in the bucket, but getting, you know, revolutionary on the school board, you know, getting ethnic studies passed in the state of California, you know, pushing back against all that, you know, racism and all the forces that are working against us. And I think those are the things that really keep me going. And then my comrades, of course, you know, whenever you get, um, you know, stressed out and, you know, you feel like you just you can't do something, there's somebody next to you that can, um, you know, step up and, and take over. Whenever I think of inspiring mujeres, that's the image that always pops in my head, like, this walking into a meeting with the twins, like the twins going to have something to take notes with, La Carriola and Toñito. And that, that, that to me is like, that's the, that's the goals for our community. And it's important for mujeres to get involved in, in struggle and stay involved in struggle and, you know, become that leadership. Thing. You know, and, and, and really, um, like in the example of Patricia Marin, you know, a strong Uno Le Barrio member who fought, and she had a, a family, a single mom, going to college, a worker, a mother, you know, someone who struggled. You know, she worked on the Pinto Project, the Chicano Mexicana Prison Project. Um, she had a, a role in the Comisión de Mujeres. She was a very strong person. I think we need to follow in her example and leadership, and I think it's important for us to stay, you know, heavily involved in struggle and to continue um, growing and taking a new leadership. Que vivan las mujeres que luchan. Que vivan. Que viva Unión del Barrio. Que viva.